Hello and welcome to a new video on Stochastic Calculus and Power Laws. I'm your host, Trader Zeta, and hopefully you're doing very, very well. Uh, first things first, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. And now on to the video. Okay. So calculus is about uh, change. How much does something change? And uh, in integrals and derivatives, you see, what, dx, okay? This is kind of like a, I would say a measure or something. So we say this is in calculus, the, this delta x is in algebra. The d with respect to the Weiner process is, this is like Brownian motion. And we have d with uh, respect to fractional Brownian motion. Okay. Now what we'd like to do today is talk about uh, power laws. And this is kind of a request. I've been looking on the Patreon, people have been talking about uh, you know, power laws, SDEs, stochastic calculus, people are really interested in this. So I thought I would give a deeper insight on how I think about it. I'm not sure if these are totally my ideas. Uh, I haven't really researched that, but this is just how I go about things. Okay. Say, for example, you have some delta x sub t. Okay. So this is just what? Normal log returns. Okay. So it's some type of stochastic process. Uh, and you have natural logarithm of t minus natural logarithm of the previous x sub t. Okay? And we can put this together using natural logarithm identities, and this is, uh, you know, the same thing. Classically, uh, this dx is the absolute value between a uh, minus b. So this is like Euclidean metric. And we have a uh, Weiner process, uh, d with respect to the Weiner process, is normally distributed uh, mean a zero, but with standard deviation t minus s for some t greater than s. Okay. All right, so this is how I think about power laws. Say, for example, we have a whole bunch of these uh, you know, beautiful returns. What we're going to do is we're going to take the absolute value of them and we're going to sort them from greatest to least. And this is going to be, uh, you know, distributed somewhat like a power law, okay? If you have a constant times n to the negative alpha. So apparently uh, this, you know, greatest to least is going to be some type of uh, power law curve, okay? So what we'd like to know is uh, what is the average of our returns? Okay, so we have what? The expected value of some type of uh, random process equals mu. We're, we'll denote that uh, by the average, okay? So the expected value of our delta t sub x is going to be mu of delta x. Okay. And uh, we said, look, uh, this has something to do, um, this expected value of... Uh, Delta, uh, let's do expected uh, delta x t is distributed like this. And what we can do is we can take the natural logarithm of both sides and we get our uh, mu of delta x over here. We get natural logarithm of a constant minus alpha natural logarithm of n. And what we're going to do is just some algebra. We're going to solve for alpha. Okay. And what we're going to say is, uh, say alpha is less than or equal to 1, then it has infinite variance, and there's nothing we can do with it. If it has infinite variance, it's just meaningless. Okay. But if uh, alpha is greater than 1, then we can maybe uh, do something with this. Okay. So what we're going to do is to change a base formula. So if you remember from your algebra one or two days, uh, this can be absorbed in here. This negative will flip these guys and you get log base N of C divided by our average equals alpha. So you can calculate this over time and you can get a whole bunch of these alphas and you can reference it with the actual alpha. And what you're going to get is an error. Okay, so you're going to, over time, get a sequence of errors. And this is going to be called kappa uh, sub x, 
is a, it is a stochastic process itself. So you have what? Alpha plus this function of your errors. Okay. And uh, this in, in and of itself can be thought of uh, kind of like a stochastic process. So what we have um, is uh, the change in this uh, dsx equals mu, okay? Because when we take the antiderivative with respect to alpha, we just need an alpha. And we have g of uh, k sx. All right, this is just, sorry, this is just x. No, there's no s there, okay? And uh, some volatility d with respect to the Weiner process. So our whole goal is to basically say, look, we have these calculated alphas. We have the actual, actual alpha. We'll call it um, uh, alpha sub a. And we can, we can, we can start to build uh, an SDE out of this. You can get the returns of the errors. You can get the volatility of the uh, returns of the errors. Um, it's all good stuff. So we'd like to solve our SDE for the errors of the alpha. And we solve what C sub M equals uh, our characteristic uh, or converted um, differential equation. Now I have gone over this uh, in the past. Uh, I would, uh, <laughs> if you're not familiar with this, I have a whole bunch of videos on how to convert SDEs to uh, second order linear homogeneous differential equations to find f of x. Uh, this is, that's not this video. <laughs> it's very long, very complicated. You have to use integrating factor and all sorts of other kind of stuff. Um, but the whole idea is that, look, once you get it into this form, uh, you can use a computer tool or a calculator, or whatever, uh, to find f, a capital F of x. And uh, granted, it will be nasty. It would be very, very nasty. This is not something you can probably do by hand. Is depending on the function of g of x, uh, you know, you have to definitely, uh, you know, look at some uh, very interesting stuff. Okay, so find approximate uh, approximation for f these uh, errors, and say for example you are just doing a classical um, SDE with a Weiner process. If you needed to, you'd go fractional. Okay, so you could make this uh, a fractional uh, Brownian motion if you wanted to. You could find the Hurst calculation, like all sorts of stuff, whether the uh, errors here are reverting or trending. You could do all sorts of crazy stuff, but I mean, I, I don't really, you know, I think that's a little too deep. <laughs> so uh, mu is the average of returns of this error. And sigma is the standard deviation of returns of the error. So one of the overarching themes that I've seen uh, a lot um, that I found particularly useful uh, in my stuff is that, look, you have some type of process, some type of natural calculation, like returns or something like that, and there is an error, and you can create a stochastic process out of that error if certain conditions are true. So, conclusion, if alpha is greater than one, create series and predict alpha error with SDE or fractional stochastic differential equation. And I think that's it. I mean, I, I, I like this idea. Uh, if anybody's particularly interested in this part, uh, look up uh, something called Zorn's Lemma. I forgot to mention this. Lemma, all right. So hopefully you enjoyed the video, uh, like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next video. The next video will probably uh, hopefully be on the Riemann hypothesis. Yeah, so I'll see you there.